Hi, and welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to a couple of cool features within the Top Solid family products. Uh, first of all, I'm going to just show you some simple part positioning onto a tombstone uh, inside of Top Solid Cam. Uh, here I've prepped my tombstone to make those symmetric vices. It's, it's a really, really nice feature. Um, but more importantly, what we're going to focus on today is probing within Top Solid and how it works. Uh, especially when you have to work on something like a tombstone where you have to pay attention to WCS orientation and whatnot. So let's get started. I've already sped ahead and have my simple part prepared, so this is the part we're going to work on. And I have the machine part setup document done already where we tell the software this is the part to cut, this is the stock, and so forth. So now what I'm going to do is inside of Top Solid Cam, I'm going to load the part. So I'm just going to simply drag and drop that right into my cam document. I'll validate the inclusion, and like that, Top Solid wants to know, where do I want to put this? Well, I want to put this up here in my upper vise. So I'm going to select this, and by the way, I'm on the 180 degree side as well. I'm going to select that face, and I'm going to put it in contact with the back face there. Now, you can see that the solution created a plane on plane constraint for you. And what I want to do is maybe offset that up a little bit. Let's say inch and a half. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to kind of rotate this to the side. You know, I want to go a little bit to the higher. I could, of course, measure, but I'm just lazy. I'll be honest. I'm going to type a value in, hit enter, watch it update. It's pretty cool. From there, I want to make sure that face of the stock is attached to the fixed jaw of my vise. And then I want to take this face to that face and you'll notice that it closed the jaw automatically on it, which is kind of cool. Last thing I need to do is I need to position this so that it's fixed, okay? And for this sample, I want to center it on my fixture. So the simplest way to do that is I'm going to go straight to a plane on plane constraint. And I'm going to ask the software to create a temporary mid plane between this face and this face. Go ahead and green check mark that. And what's my destination plane? I can either use the absolute frame down here at the bottom, why not? Or I could create a whole nother plane, but the absolute frame I know is centered, so I'm going to select it. My part turns blue. My positioning is complete. From here now, we want to go ahead and start setting our origin to be precisely what we want it to be. So I'm going to right click on my origin, hit edit. And the first thing I'm going to point out is that the frame is inverted. And this makes sense if you think about it, because the software doesn't know that you're on the 180 degree side yet, because we haven't told it you're on the 180 degree side. So we have to do a couple things with this. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that frame over. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to create a brand new frame. And I'm just going to do a frame on a plane in this case. Why not? My plane is going to be the face of my stock. My origin point is going to be the midpoint between that corner and that corner. Perfect. Last thing I want to pay attention to is the orientation of X. I want X positive to be facing to the right on this, because remember, from the zero degree side, X positive is facing to our right in this orientation, so we want to carry that orientation forward when we come to that side. Perfect. From here, I also want to label the origin. Now, in this case, I'm using an Akuma Horizontal Machining Center, so I'm going to label this origin as Origin 3, and that's important to remember that. Also notice Top Solid labels it. Now, next what I want to do is hit Save, but beyond that, next what I want to do is I want to create another frame that is going to be kind of that fixed frame that we're measuring from with our probing cycle, because we want to use a probing cycle to tell the machine to set Origin 3 for us automatically. So now what we have to do is we have to go up here to our additional tab, oh, pardon me, our operations tab, and come over here to origin. So now we're going to define a new origin. Again, it's going to require a frame. So I'm going to come over here to my plus sign, and I'm going to do frame on plane. Why not? And I'm going to say that this one is off of the face here of my tombstone. My origin point, I'm going to say, is right in the middle of that edge. Perfect. And my absolute x direction instead will be this way. So again, I inverted it to go that way. Perfect. And now here, I'm going to call this 74. Why not? I'm just using another work offset for this. And I'll green check mark. And you can see here it's labeled as 74, but it's grayed out because it's not active yet. Now it's time to probe. So let's do that. Let's go to the additional tab. 
I'm going to come up over to here. We call it control points in top solid. I'm going to go pick a tool. When I go pick a tool, I'm just going to go look in my library for one. You can build one on the fly. It's up to you. I'm going to choose this probe. That looks good to me. I'm going to come into my cutting conditions here. I'm going to make sure we have a nice simple feed rate for this. And I'll make sure that I select my proper gauge. Maybe I want the tip, the center. It's up to you. And now what I want to do is choose the type of probing I want to apply. So up here, we have the kind of machining. If I double click, these are all of the standard probing cycles that Top Solid ships with. I want to probe a rectangle. I'll come back to my geometry button, and now I'm just going to start selecting what I want to probe. Now, in this case, I want to probe the stock. So I'm going to choose stock, and that allows me to choose the four sides of the stock. Perfect. As soon as I have the four sides, instantaneously you see your probing tool path, which is nice. The last step, and this is the really, really important step, we need to tell Top Solid to calculate this probing off of this WCS down here. Right now it's using this one. So to do that, we need to go tell the solution to use it. Now, that origin we created before has never been used, so there's no quick way to do this. We have to go and tell the solution to use it. So we're going to say create on frame. And here we're just going to choose that frame. And we're going to come down here to origin. Instead of origin 3, we're going to choose origin 74. I'm even going to label this uh, probing WCS just to make it a little bit easier to differentiate between the standard WCS later. Once that's done, green check mark, perfect. One final step. This has to do with how we hook up probing to your post processor. Uh, this varies from post processor to post processor because customer requirements vary. This is just one sample of how to work with it. So I go to note here and I enter the offset number I described up here as what we call a post processor word or a PP word in top solid. So I'm going to type 3 in this case and hit the plus sign. If this was 22, you would type 22 here. It's important that you enter the work offset you want to measure 4. Okay. Beyond that, green check mark, and we've now made our probing. And here you're going to see the simulation kick in, and it's going to come over, and it's going to go ahead and do its probing cycle. It'll come up, move the tombstone, probe from there, probe up there, and so on. Kind of cool. Now... Here's the most important part. In order for probing to actually output any G-code, we still need to create some toolpath on this part. Because if we have no toolpath, the software won't know that there's a WCS or another origin to work with. Therefore, you have nothing to probe. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and build some toolpath. And I'll just use simple end milling for this first example. I'm going to go down to this face, and I'm going to choose end milling. Software is going to find the area to machine, which is really cool, of course. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to go find a tool. Let's go choose an end mill. I'm going to double click on pocket two. Why not? And maybe here I want to look for a three quarter inch end mill. Let's see. Do I have something that's got good reach? Let's get something with a holder. It's always more fun. Perfect. We'll click OK to that. Now, here's the fantastic part of Top Solid, of course. Now that it has enough information, the software is going to generate the tool path automatically for us. Like that, you can see I have my tool path. I can click OK, and I'm ready to go. The last step then I'll show you, of course, is post-processing, because I want to show you how the information that we just created transfers into that part. Again, we go into our simulation here. You can notice the beautiful stock model has been updated already, and the software is on its merry way doing what we want it to do. Cool. Hit save one more time just for fun. Ah, oh, I caught a mistake. I forgot on this operation to set it to use offset 3. How did I catch that? I'm looking right here in my operations manager, and there's offset 74 still being used, probing WCS. And we definitely don't want to run this off the probing WCS. So let's go back in here. Let's simply go over here to WCS solutions. We should be able to click in the drop-down menu, and there is offset 3. Let's select it. Give it a sec for top solid update. There we go. Offset 3. And then we'll go ahead and green check mark. Toolpath will be recalculated off the new origin solution. And now we'll go and post process. Again, if I didn't do that, toolpath still wouldn't be correct. Okay. So, final step. 
let's go ahead and post process. So I'll go to my operations tab here and I'm going to go over here to generate ISO. And here I'm going to use one of our customers post processors for their Akuma. We'll go ahead and hit the post process button and hit go like that. Here's our tool path. So here we're calling up our probing cycle. We're moving to the right coordinates. This is, of course, measured off of that G50 or that, uh, pardon me, that the height offset 74. It's called right there. We're moving into location. We're calling our probing to set origin 3, origin 3. We're done. Now we're going back over to here. We're calling H3, of course, for this work offset now. And now we're just away doing our cut. Hope you found this video to be informative. If you have any questions, please reach out to us.